So maybe you're stuck in your apartment and we're gradually moving into this quarantine and lockdown mode where your favorite coffee shop's closed, you can't go to school or to work, you can't be seeing family or friends that much, and you're wondering, well, what the hell do I do for the next potential five weeks or more? Now in this video, I'm gonna share a couple ways you can stay productive and stay focused with everything that's going on out in the world. Hey guys, Alex Hine, author of the book, Master of the Day. The first thing for me, is focusing on creating an elevated state every day. Now, depending on your own personal discipline and your habits and who you hang around, you're probably being exposed to a lot of anxiety and a lot of worry. Now, we know how strong those can suppress the immune system in terms of the science behind that. And so the antidote is to make sure you're dedicating time to practices that can help you counteract that. Now, for me, what I'm doing in the morning is in the morning I'm doing 30 minutes of Qigong, and then in the evening, I'm doing 30 minutes of seated meditation. Now in the morning, primarily, I'm actually doing either a standing qigong or a shaking qigong. And when I do the shaking, I actually will listen to Tony Robbins' priming video. It's 20 minutes. It goes through gratitudes, positive experiences, focusing on your goals for the year, for the day. And so I'm combining exercise with an inner practice that can change my state. And by doing that, I'm starting off with kind of like a force field around me that prevents and repels some of this negativity to make sure I'm starting off with a clear state to focus in the morning. Now, the two things I would recommend the most during this time are connection. Connection with people, whether it is on the phone, one friend at a time, someone to go walking with in the park, and also connection with nature. These two things are two of the strongest buffers besides the other things we do against illness. Right? The emotional nervous system and also the protective effects that nature actually has on your immunity. The second thing is to really take time to revisit your life vision. And sometimes it's nice to just sit in a park or sit at my desk and look out the window and replan out what I want the next year to look like or the next three months. So I'm going through and I'm painting the picture of how my graduation wants to be and my summer, how I want to spend it and walking the Camino de Santiago in September and then the move to California after. So really taking the time to plan out my vision going forward. And this is a great time to just be reflective in general about your life so far and where you want it to be and treating it almost like a new year reflection. The third thing is to really take time to read books that make you think. Because pretty much we have a lot of time to think right now and not a lot of time to act on certain things. For me, I'm reading two books. One is Finding Your Own North Star by Martha Beck. And one is When Things Fall Apart by Pema Chodron. And the two of them are really making me think about two big things. The first is what is my gut and intuition and what are my hunches telling me I want in life going forward? And the second is what is my kind of relationship with fear? Like what is fear telling me right now and how do I respond to fear in my life? And so right now I have two things. My intuition may be saying something and my fear may be saying something different. And so trying to understand what key lessons I can apply from certain books and then applying them to certain journaling exercises or goal setting exercises. The last thing you could spend time doing right now is continuing on your path of mastery. Whatever field you're in, dedicating one hour a day to becoming the best possible. I've shared the story here of Earl Nightingale. Around the time of the Great Depression, he was passing a bunch of steel workers out of business and they were all talking and gossiping and just sitting around for four or five hours every day. And they were looking for jobs. And he was saying, you know, in the 10 or 20 years that these people had evening hours free, even dedicating one hour a day, they could have practically become an open heart surgeon with that time dedicated towards a new skill. And that in one hour a day, within three years, you can become one of the top 1% in your field, focusing on a specific skill set. And, you know, for me, I read a story about a Japanese physician who lived to be 108 and the thing that he practiced the most was actually moxibustion. So burning this medicinal herb we use in Chinese medicine on certain points in the body. He lived to be 108. And whenever his son, also a physician, an MD, whenever his son got sick, he would give him like the tisk tisk. you haven't been doing your moxibustion. So I'm dedicating one hour a day to studying the craft of moxibustion to understand it better. Because all the great physicians in my field have mentioned the importance, but I don't have much training in it. So maybe there's something you want to be great at. Video production, being an artist, something else, a sport. Now's the time to dedicate that one hour per day to becoming a master. 
So that is installment number one. I hope that gives you a couple ideas of what you can be working on right now. So check it out, first link below, and then my most recent videos on the similar topic right over here.